Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all okay. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to do a video, just basically a Q&A on network radio. I did a video a while back on this device here, which is the Sennheiks N60. Now this is a mobile network radio, and this video has gained quite a bit of um, traction lately. And a lot of people are asking questions. A lot of the questions that people are asking, I already explained in the video and the other network radio videos that I've done, but. I just wanted to do a bit of a video today to clear up some of these questions so hopefully they'll, they'll stop being asked um, or stop being asked as much. So I just went through the comments and jotted down some questions on the laptop here. I'm just going to read through them in no particular order. Some of them may have similar answers so I may repeat myself a little bit but I just thought it would be a good opportunity to sort of get some of these questions answered and, and put people in the picture for those who aren't clear on exactly what network radio is all about. So the questions, a lot of them are around this device, uh, the N60 here, but a lot of them encompass the network radio hobby as a whole. So I thought I would just sort of answer those questions in no particular order. Um, so yeah, here goes. So the first question is, what is this? So whether it's what is this device here or what is network radio? Um, so network radio, first of all, I must point out and clarify once and for all that it's not amateur radio. A lot of people are commenting saying this isn't amateur radio. And I've said this in every video I've done on network radios that it isn't amateur radio at all. It's just a hobby that a lot of amateur radio operators are using. And in layman's terms, they're basically fancy mobile phones with PTTs that people can link into radio systems, which is different. Um, they can go into Echo Link, they can go into Zello and basically use VOIP or voice over IP apps to talk to each other. It's as simple as that. So it's not VHF, it's not UHF, it isn't HF. Although the technology is a radio because a mobile phone is a radio it runs on the similar principles to radio it isn't amateur radio and we're all like fully aware of that within within the network radios hobby and that it's not amateur radio and that, that sort of seems to come up a lot and I've, I've said in every single video that it's not amateur radio and we're fully aware of that it's just something that amateur radio operators are using and it's gaining traction and becoming pretty popular and it's, it's sort of growing day by day. The network radio channels now have a good couple of thousand users on, which is great, and most of them are licensed um, amateur radio operators. Um, second question on that video was how do I order one of these? So if you want to order this Sennheiks N60, then go to the Sennheiks website. I'll put a link in the description or just down below on the screen here um, and go and speak to the guy at Sennheiks and they will... Um, sort you out with ordering one and they do sell them on other stores like aliexpress um, ebay and things like that and um, so if you want to order one of this device then contact Sennheiks and they will sort out ordering i never give prices in my videos because what might be correct at the time of filming may not be correct in two or three years time so i don't give prices on my videos so the price will be on the website they do cost a couple of hundred pounds and um, but the price the exact price will be on the website and that's one reason i don't give prices out is because um, it changes all the time another really common question is do i have to have a license to operate these radios no you don't because they're not two-way radios they don't operate on licensed bands they are technically mobile phones so you don't have to have a radio license some people use their own call signs some people just use a nickname so like mine's rm comms but to anyone on the network radio i'm just lewis um some people use the amateur radio call signs and that's you know possibly a way of saying to the person you're talking to I'm licensed by the way, this is my call sign. It's handy for amateur radio operators to sort of keep in touch and meet each other on network radio. So they give the call signs, more of a novelty really, um, just to, to give the call sign out there so people know who they are, you know, if they ever want to look them up or anything like that. Um, then they're able to, but no, you don't have to have a license because it's not two-way radio and it isn't a licensed thing, um, even on Zello, so you don't have to have a license. The only time you would need a license is if you're using Echo Link, but you can use Echo Link on a multitude of platforms. It just so happens that you can use net, um, Echo Link on a network radio, so no, you don't need a license. A couple of people have said that it's it's not a phone, it's not amateur radio, it's Tetra. It's not Tetra, it's nothing to do with Tetra. Uh, Tetra is actually a radio-based system. Um, Tetra, so like for example, Police Tetra here in the UK uses the UHF portion of the band, um, four, middle of 400 megahertz, somewhere like that, I can't remember off the top of my head. So it's definitely not Tetra. Tetra is a two-way radio digital um, standard, so it's, it's not even closely related to Tetra whatsoever. Another question is what about VHF and UHF apps, do they exist? Well, VHF and UHF apps don't exist because they require 
a two-way radio so they would require the radio to output RF um, over VHF or UHF which they don't so there's no VHF or UHF apps some network radios do have the capability of operating on VHF or UHF but that is a, a separate side of the device so the network radio side is the mobile phone bit of that device the two-way radio is the two-way radio bit of that device so that is essentially two radios in one they're not cross-linked in any way it's basically two devices in one so it's like having an iPhone which also transmits on VHF or UHF it, it, it's two separate systems in, into one device um, can you use them to make or receive phone calls or send text messages? Yeah, some network radios you can, others you can't. It's best just checking when you buy. Um, some of the handhelds or a lot of the handhelds do make and receive calls. Some of the mobile units don't make and receive calls, but it depends which firmware you buy, which, um, which sorry, which model you buy, which firmware it has and, and things like that. So just check. Some do make calls, some don't make calls. Um, another one is I don't understand the, uh, this is it just an Android device with a microphone I really don't get this at all that was one of the comments that's exactly what it is it's an Android mobile phone or an Android um, phone based device because some of them as I say don't make and receive phone calls but it's basically an Android system with a PTT that's all it is a phone with a PTT um, so you, you could look at it as that they're just a novelty they're just a fancy gadget for doing something that your iPhone will do um, that would be absolutely correct it's just nice to have a dedicated device for some people um, you know these these are a bit more appealing than your standard mobile phone so they look like radios but yeah they're, they're basically reshelled Android phones which op, which can run Zello and things like that and they, they have a PTT so yeah that that's exactly what they are um, a couple of people asked the um, charger rating on the Sennheiser N60, so it's a 12 volt charger that plugs into the mains, um, it also comes with a cigarette lead and it's just one amp, um, it's a one amp 12 volt power supply. So it doesn't actually take batteries, um, the handheld network radios do have batteries in but the mobile ones at the moment don't have the um, capability to put a battery in. Um, some network radios like the Enrico TM7 do have the space inside the shell to fit a battery should you want to and modify that because the shell is mainly empty but the Sennheiser N60 um, is a little bit more packed inside the shell so you'd struggle to get a battery in there. Another common question is, is there a Simplex app that can be installed on this device so they can talk device to device? There isn't apart from Zello, so I know what you mean. There are there are network radios out there now which do use their own dedicated app. So the Quingo um, 7S Plus, that uses Quingo PTT. There's a, a couple that use dedicated apps, but that is a similar concept to Zello. Now, ICOM have just released um, a 4G device which allows communication from radio to radio and Retivis have also rele uh, received, released a POC radio um, which talks from radio to radio using the mobile phone networks. But these don't do that. These just use VOIP apps. It's a lot more of a simpler concept. Uh, two questions here. So adding another $20 a month for a SIM card does not sound like the ham radio freedom that I am used to. And um, let me get this straight. You're buying a piece of hardware, paying for another data or phone plan to use an app you already had on your primary phone. Yeah, exactly. So there's a SIM card in this which is independent to my uh, iPhone, to my main um, phone. There are some really cheap data plans out there. If you don't plan to use them to make... Um, phone calls and send text messages you can just get a really cheap data plan and that will allow you um, for a couple of pounds a month to use these and the data consumption on them for voice over things like Zello is really low so I pay a fiver a month for example on GiftGaff for a data bundle I never ever use the, the full amount it's the, the, the really low data consumption on these so yeah um, you are essentially paying for two mobile phones but you could argue that some people pay two lots of car insurance and tax to have two cars for the fun of it. Um, if you want to have one of these devices and you want to um, put another SIM card in, then that's up to you. Why not? Um, and another big question is, does it run on Wi-Fi? Do you have to use the networks? No, you don't have to use the network at all. It will run off your home Wi-Fi. So this radio, this N60, I have at home and I run this on the home um, Wi-Fi network. Uh, so yeah, it, it does have a SIM card in because I've been doing some testing um, and I, I use that in a couple of different network radios. I actually, have a couple of SIM cards that I, I, I swap between the two or three devices. I've, I think I've got well quite a few now. Um, but yeah, when you're at home, you can just use them on the Wi-Fi network. And you, if you're in a public area um, that has public Wi-Fi hotspots, then you can use public Wi-Fi on them as well. But yeah, to answer the question, it, 
if you want to use them out and about properly then you would potentially need another data plan another sim card another quite valid point that someone made is um, so something that people seem to be drastically overlooking in the UK is these are not exempt from mobile phone legislation while driving especially when the manufacturers are leasing them as mobile units just a heads up people it just takes one switched on officer that's right you are operating a mobile phone so the use of radios is allowed in the UK uh, behind the wheel because the police use radios, taxi drivers, a lot of those use radios, lorries use radios, CB is legal in the car and your amateur radio um, license, uh, your amateur radio uh, equipment is legal to use in the car. Now a police officer probably would not notice if you're using a mobile network radio as a radio device unless they're into amateur radio or they happen to have seen them which is unlikely. The issue you've got is, firstly, if you're using a handheld, you are likely to draw more suspicion because they will see quite a, a larger device in your hand as you're driving. If you've got the microphone there, then you, you probably get away with it. And if you were stopped, you probably you probably be okay. But it doesn't make it right because it's a technicality. These operate on mobile phone frequencies, technically. So you are technically breaking the law by using this whilst driving. Now, you're more likely to be pulled over and done for driving without due care and attention or dangerous driving as a result of using that rather than someone saying that is out of band for what is legal in the UK because an officer generally isn't going to know. But if he's pulled you over, the chances are he's probably pulled you over because the use of the network radio behind the wheel is affecting your driving, i.e. you're not concentrating properly or he feels that you using that device could cause you to not be in proper control of your vehicle and that is that is what you're more likely to be to be done for uh, for driving without due care and attention or dangerous driving but yeah if you are going to use these there are risks involved because it's technically not legal which is why i don't have my mobile network radio in the car at the moment on the other hand there are devices that you can use like multimedia buttons and bluetooth switches and um, the thing that operates your mobile phone when it's on a selfie stick you can buy those for you know relatively cheap costs on eBay and Amazon and things like that and you can use those to key up the radio via Bluetooth so you could attach it to the steering wheel or the gear shift of your car and key up via Bluetooth which is a more safer option. Um, the microphone does have reasonable gain on it so if you had the microphone sort of out of sight um, you wouldn't be seen using it and you'd still be picked up on Zello and you wouldn't have any issues with the volume but it's, it's up to you guys. Um, I don't use mine in the car, um, ju just in case. As I say, they don't fall into UK laws for operating um, behind the wheel. It is a technicality, as I say, because of the frequencies they operate on. So just be careful. Um, you may not be done for using a mobile phone behind the wheel, but as I say, if it does affect your driving, there are other penalties that you could um, incur. So that's just one to watch out for. So I'm not advocating hiding the microphone out of the way, but just it's just one to watch out for. And the last one is, um, I want to start a Zello account. Should my username be my ham call sign? If not, when would my call sign come into play? So your Zello username can be anything you want because you're not on the amateur radio bands, so it doesn't matter. Um, even if you were going into a Zello interface to a repeater, for example, in the UK, your radio call sign or whatever your Zello username wouldn't wouldn't be any part of that i.e. that wouldn't be transmitted over the air so if you were using a closed group on Zello that was linked into a UHF repeater for example you, was, you would have to use your call sign because you're going into the, that repeater but for Zello to Zello communications you don't have to use a call sign whatsoever like I say a lot of people do choose to use the call sign so when they're talking you know people can say oh yeah that's G7XYZ for example um, yeah it's just a way of amateur radio operators putting the call signs out there but it doesn't have to be done so I hope that answered a few of the questions guys. I say the main one is that, that crops up, the main comment is that it isn't amateur radio and everyone's aware of that. Um, we know it's not amateur radio whatsoever but the the hobby um, has become really intriguing to amateur radio operators and sort of in return the, the, the sort of migrating um, over there or certainly adding it into amateur radio as sort of like a sideline which is what I do. So yeah, if you have any other questions, then drop them in the comments box below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, as you can see, I'm in the new shack at the moment. 
Uh, it's not quite finished and set up inside yet, so I'm not going to show you everything yet. But I've got a video coming really soon on the uh, the new shed shack that I've been building. Um, if you haven't seen those videos, then I'll bob them at the end of this one or in the description, and you can go and have a look what I've been up to there. But yeah, the shed shack is is like really um, sort of close to being finished now, guys. So stay tuned for that. And we'll leave that one there. Hope you enjoyed this video. 7-3 for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.